Hi everyone and welcome to Privacy Now. I'm Mike Fibus. You know, the term deep fake has really crept into our consciousness in a big way this year. It's hanging out in that dark corner uh, where all our other fears are. Some have called it uh, a threat to democracy, others even more dire and say it's a threat to our very way of life. But how scary is this technology really? And what's being done about it to limit the potential harm? We're going to unpack that today in this episode of Privacy Now. And here to do that with me, I'm fortunate to have Jennifer Kite Powell. Jennifer covers innovation in science and technology at Forbes. Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Mike. It's such, so great to be here on this day to have this, talk about this topic. I'm really excited about it. Yeah, me too. So let's, let's start at the beginning. Um, what is uh, deep fake and how does that differ from regular fake? or shallow fakes. Right. Um, I love this question because uh, a lot of people uh, go to deep fakes right away, but we also forget there's a real piece of technology behind the term deep fakes. And it's based on this generative adversarial network technology created a couple of years ago, as you know, uh, by a man by the name of Ian Goodfellow. And it essentially is like the battle royale of networks where it basically just pits two networks together against each other. It's deep, it is extreme deep learning. It's, it's, um, it just mimics the distribution of data, right? And it has this one network. It's like a counterfeiter and a cop in a way, right? So it's sort of trying to balance out the loss from both to sort of create this net, net zero game. But the things that it can create essentially was created to produce the really artistic pieces that these researchers were creating, you know, to test out these algorithms. And it's, it's almost like art in a way. Uh, if you look at some of these beginning pieces of work out of, that were coming out of England and Montreal at the time, a lot of these academic labs, really beautiful recreations of um, landscapes of Mona Lisa, right? That, that's quite beautiful in terms of using technology to recreate or mimic something that we know from real life. I've actually thought of it more as a, a football coach sending a, a, another coach to study the other team and, and gaming each other. And I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, so, so it's fascinating, but really fake isn't new to us. I mean, fake was a no. big piece with stills primarily of the last election and there's all Absolutely. those, uh, you know, Muslim Brotherhood pictures of Obama. And, yeah. and I don't, I think also over time, you know, if you, if we get, I always like to go back to how things began. If we go back to, um, well, maybe this is, maybe this is too far reaching, but um, headlines, you know, in newspapers over a hundred years ago were quite sensational and they weren't actually accurate. And we were oddly not so leery of that. Um, so I think when it comes to visuals, we tend to get a little, um, a little more agitated, right? We see the pictures, they're easily manipulated and videos have always been altered in some way. We could call them shallow fakes now, like the Nancy Pelosi video. Everybody knew that was a hoax, right? It was, it was extremely sh a shallow fake, but right. it's still a manipulated image. Right or manipulated video, which, manipulated video in that sense, right, exactly. but that's yeah. not scary because it was so easy to, uh, to discern where you right. get, where people start to get more scared is when you see, you know, like the Bill Hader video turning in. into Al Pacino. Right, right, and uh, Tom Cruise. But this brings up a good point, and I hope, I hope maybe you can jump in on this, is like, to me, this brings up a point of, entertainment usage and political usage. So the Hollywood, Hollywood has been using this type of technology, you know, for a while in making films, they bring back characters in Rogue One, they, they brought back a character, um, they used, gave Thanos a soul and the Avengers all done through deep learning technology. And we don't really have a problem when it's used for entertainment, do we? Right. Well, and, and there's another thing too. I mean, the GAN technology has, in a sense, democratized that. No, no political operative is going to hire digital domain in LA, right, to uh, right. 
to make a fake video, but if you can hire a couple of programmers, that's a different thing entirely. Exactly. And then, and then you, then you can take this app Zao, you know, that came out earlier this summer that, you know, put your regular face on that of Leonardo DiCaprio and all of the movie scenes he has been in, you know, and it, it's quite remarkable. Well, that's, that's a lot of fun. Yeah, and thus far it has been a lot of fun. It's, you know, those have been amusing videos. Maybe not so much the Alec Baldwin turning into Trump that turned into something inflammatory, but, yeah. uh, and, also, um, and also basically click, clickbait. I think that we're, we just don't care too much. You know, I'm not sure you hear regular people, consumers, all up in arms about deep fakes. You hear the media, you hear politicians, but I'm not sure you hear a 17 year old being too worried about it. You know, it's not, it's not, it's, is, I think fake, you know, you hear people more up in arms about fake news and now even that's sort of like, oh, well, it's part of, you know, the world we live in now. Yeah, and, and you know, our comfort level is sort of set in our childhood. I, I, I always point back to 150 years ago when, you know, with the, folk story of John Henry going against the steam engine. Last month, um, there was a cartoon circulating around on Twitter where it had a lot of humans walking with their phones in their hands with this blue screen in their eye and it had robots sitting on a bench, um, you know, reading a book. <laughs> and it says, um, humans are on a loop and robots are learning. And uh, I think this is quite interesting. It made me think uh, about the idea of many years ago, they, and they still have this term now, they talked about uncanny valley, and that humans had a very, uh, they were okay with robots up until that certain point where the robots or cyborgs looked like us. And then, you know, it was like, oh no, we're freaked out. We can't handle it. So you saw all these, this robot creation where robots had these very nondescript faces and they were like friendly going to help you in the kitchen, right? And that was a way to make them palatable and have consumers sort of release their fear of, of robotics uh, and, and AI. And I think the sort of, it's the same thing with deep fake. You have the pornography industry, which, you know, this did prompt a lot of um, statutes to go on the books in the states, 46 states, I believe, uh, the revenge porn statutes um, about, uh, brought up a lot of First Amendment rights, uh, privacy, you know, uh, privacy issues, because this is privacy now, um, about, you know, what, what were their rights in terms of being actors and performers. It's very interesting to me to watch this arc in a way. Um, but yet there's another arc that's been running steadily through and that's entertainment and film. Uh, there's a gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous piece of art uh, that recreates Dolly called Dolly Lives. And it was done with, uh, this t with the deep, deep fake technology with GANs. And it's one of the most beautiful pieces of, of art artistry I think I've ever seen. And that is very rarely pointed to as an example of this technology. We, we either cry wolf over here or we just are happy to go to Star Wars and watch the movie over here. Over here. Right. Let me stop you there because I, I wasn't aware of this uh, Dolly Lives, but it's basically, it's not copying Dolly uh, paintings. It's making them based on the style it learned. And it's him. It's bringing him back to life. They, they took different footage of him and things and created him talking to people in this, in this short, short, short film. It's, it's quite beautiful. I see. Okay, interesting. So, yeah, the, the other thing you mentioned, you pointed at porn and then uh, as a usage, an early usage, and then uh, legislation as, in a sense, a, a, a solution. You know, granted, it's still an issue, but it's, the legislation now lays out penalties. So Absolutely. And you, you know this well, you know, just as it's just as important that a lot of even a lot of the a lot of data breaches and data fines and privacy issues will really only be enforceable if they start levying very, very large fines. Right. So so I think a lot of times in the, I, I do think that the law in this case, some ethics and the law and, uh, you know, data protection, privacy protection laws is definitely nowhere near where the pace of this technology and its application is going nowhere near like light years away it, it could be a solution 
It, but when you get to politics, you're not so covered, right? Yeah, it's a little bit more of a, uh, a wild west there still. Exactly. And, and a lot of us still have a bad taste in our mouth from all the fake news of the surrounding the last election. So exactly. I do think some exactly. folks view this as now just a, a more potent weapon in that, in that yeah. same fight. In politics, there's always a twist, right? There's always an agenda. So I think a lot of this is just a natural progression. So this is version, you know, 2.0 of that. If you if you want to if you want to think about it that way, because technology is just moving us towards this. Right or 7.0, 8.0. I mean, yeah, it, right. right? I mean, truth, half truth, lies is uh, yeah. that's been the name of the game as long as there's been. The politics. I'm sure we could go back to the Ottoman Empire and have the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you may be right. So on the technology front, I mean, the folks aren't just sitting by either. I mean, in a sense, back to that football analogy, yeah. there's yeah. A, kind of a third team now trying to see, yeah. well, you know, can I one up that AI that's trying to, to help teach the original AI? Sort yeah. of, um, you know, maybe that third blade in the racer. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like that analogy a lot. Yeah, I think, you know, people are trying. I think there's some researchers in New York who last month um, also had said that they think they figured out a way to um, embed all of this tracking inside of a camera. But they also said that it might bring up privacy issues because by doing that, they would be able to see the footprint or they would be able to see the traces of who had been in there and would that be a privacy uh, violation? So I think, you know, just tracking this tagging of photo files um, is a way to do it. But I think, I do think the technology is just going to leapfrog past it every time because I think algorithms are just exponentially accelerating here. Yeah. And in, in a sense, you know, that camera technology is sort of it's new for imaging and, and video, yeah. but it is very much what's happening in our smartphones and our, um, yeah. and our computers. They're basically hardening in, in the silicon, you know, authentication. Yes. So you, you can't, yes. it's much more difficult to spoof it if it's in the hardware. And so, yeah, it, uh, you end up with other issues now is uh, if I were to take a, um, say, a, an electric outlet off the wall in a, product video to make it look neater or um, take lines off of my face and full disclosure I in routinely do that <laughs> on photographs I haven't figured out how to do it in video yet but um, it, yeah so there's a lot of uh, you know between here and deep fake there's a lot of things that we generally accept as okay that that would also yeah. make harder so, you know, what we've been really talking about is sort of mitigation of ways to limit it, like sort of nuclear proliferation treaties, as opposed to stamping it out and, and solving it. Absolutely. And I happen to think that that's probably way, way heavier than deep fakes. Yeah. And maybe that's the right approach. I mean, you know, life is full of uncertainties and, you know, we yeah. grew up with uh, the threat of nuclear Armageddon and we just Absolutely. understand it to be one of the many uncertainties we have. And there's a new one, folks. That's I think that's what really this is about. Yes, you're right. We have grown up with that looming over our heads. And but this these generations really have it. So is this their arms race, this Armageddon for, you know, this this digital age that we live in? Because I don't see a lot of teenagers and people in their 20s really worried about this. Um, maybe if you're political, you think this is terrible. We have to stop it because this is disinformation. But disinformation, like we said earlier, has been out there forever in terms of politics and, uh, you know, the government. So I'm not sure that there's a solution to this. Um, and does there need to be one? And also there's this idea of entrepreneurial spirit, right? People are coming up with these pieces of technology because they can, because we've evolved this far. And um, is it up to the government to censor that? Or is it up to us, this entrepreneurial spirit that continues to evolve how technology used? Because this technology is used in a lot of industry. Right, it's uh, just uh, the continuation of the yin and the yang, I think. Um, let's, uh, 
let's uh, we're about out of time, but let's uh, let's go ahead and each rate one to ten on the uh, on the scale ten being nuclear Armageddon and one being, you know, uh, let's move on to something else. Uh, how big a how scared should we be of deep fakes? Two. I'm, I'm going to give it you know more of a three point seven. Okay, so we're in the same we're in the same corner there on that one. Yeah, mild. It's obviously yeah. going to be something that uh, you know. It's another uncertainty that we can add to the pile. But uh, I agree. I agree. This has been great fun. It has been, Jennifer. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it, and thank you all for watching. Until next time, bye bye.